received the my tweet and you tried to tune in I am sorry had to restart everything we got about two three minutes in tops and the internet dropped just just dropped us completely and my Twitch streamer, all of my numbers went away. So uh, when it restarted on its own, it, it well, I don't think it was working. So we had to restart everything. I do apologize. Uh, let me see. Try and reiterate everything I was talking about as I was starting this little fella. Uh, China marker, newsprint. Eventually get around to some pens a little bit later tonight. I'll tell you a little bit about this. A little bit later on too. Uh, I do a lot of old men faces because it is the thing that I carve the most. Why? Because it's my most popular. It's my bread and butter for my uh, my online sales and my uh, my booth when I'm at shows. Um, I was thanking everybody that has ever written a post, a useful post or an article about streaming on Twitch. I couldn't tell you which ones I read, but I read a lot, watched some YouTube videos, and to finally get some decent settings. I think we're, we're finally up and running. I apologize for just about the oh man what was I doing test for probably about good four or five days huh so but uh, if you if you come back again to see what everything all the hoopla is about all the noise I do appreciate it you know what we're gonna there you go he's gonna be kind of maybe ignoring me a little bit he's he's looking over here he's like yeah I'm tired of your stuff I want to I watch the birds over here if you've uh, if you've ever seen me at a renaissance fair or I do the occasional art show. You're going to see me doing a lot of this in the booth in between customer visits. This is how I show everybody what goes into making these little fellas. A lot of time with a drawing implement in hand because it's a whole lot easier to practice this than it is to practice this. And they don't ever have to match exactly. These are all just practice. Sometimes I use these if I come up with something really special or something I really like. Or sometimes if I get a really extra special piece of wood, it's got a really pretty shape. Then I'll, I'll do some preliminary drawings. Otherwise, these are just a, a good way to warm both the brain and the hand-eye coordination up for the day. I find that if I draw a little bit, if I can have the time to draw a little bit before I go out and carve, even a half hour, 45 minutes of drawing makes a big difference. I can usually have a little bit more productive of a day. My work comes out a little better. It's just like warming up for anything else, a sport, music. I know a lot of musicians like to play scales to start, or vocalists have their routine, whatever they... Maybe a very simple song or some nursery rhymes they say to get everything warmed up. And as I'm doing these, I'm thinking about my high and my low points. Something like this here, where the hair and the cheek meet. They get a little more tone. 
because it's a deeper area. Same with this here. And these aren't meant for studio pieces. They are, oh, that was a little too high there. So we can come back with the white and remind myself that that's a bit of a higher spot. It's a bit of a higher spot there. Something like that, it's gonna be a higher spot. These aren't meant for galleries. Occasionally I have somebody who might want one to hang on their wall for a little bit, and that's cool. But it's newsprint, so it, it changes color pretty quickly. A lot of times this stuff will even be uh, starting to yellow on the edges and whatnot uh, before the end of a show. Depends on how much sunlight it gets. Yeah, I don't like that, but sometimes I play around with, that's the other thing with paper and pencil, is you get to test out different looks. Do you want, you know, did I want the eyebrow to come way down there, and I already don't like the way it would fill in, so. But even though I've done hundreds of these faces for practice, you keep doing more because when you go out when I go out to my shed to sit down and get these made it just kind of comes to you it's a lot easier you sit down even with just a simple uh, straight or slightly curved piece of wood sit down and the shape comes to you a lot quicker You know, a lot of them are very, very simple looks. Keep things like the eyes simple. China marker isn't exactly something that's known for being able to produce great detail on something this size. All right, we'll show you, we'll compare this a little bit. This is a carving I did in a little piece of pine lumber. This is actually half of a two by four. So if you took another piece this wide and put it out here, you'd have a have a two by four. I find these a lot uh, on the side of the road. You'll find two by fours, rip them on a table saw and take a sander to it, clean all the sides up before you get going. Drill a hole, shape the top. I have a Forstner bit I use to carve out the bottom or drill out the bottom. That way when it sits, as wood uh, expands and contracts, the bottom uh, won't affect it and it doesn't get wobbly. It'll sit nice on just about any semi-flat surface. And in case you're at all curious, yeah, I do have a Sharpie there. They hold a Sharpie. So anyway, while obviously slightly different face, you can see the dark areas here. Anyway, let me try and get you some more light there. Sorry about that. Aries here. Hello, whoever is viewing. Thanks for stopping on by. If you were the person who came by earlier with my tests, I'm sorry it took me so long to get going. Thanks for coming back. If you're somebody new, thanks for joining us. Something like that. You can see how deep we wind up carving that. And all this gets shaded. That's why some of these spots are really, really dark besides the, the shadows uh, from the lighting. Uh, after everything's sealed with lacquer, I shade it with an oil wash. An oil wash is nothing more than oil paints. I usually use like raw umber, burnt umber, something like that. That's uh, a nice dark brown and you thin it with mineral spirits. Keep it in a jar so I've always got it around. And once my lacquer's dry, which is usually about a half a day or a day, I take a small brush and I just dab it on the parts I want, let it sit for about 20 minutes, come back with a cloth, wipe off any of the high parts and whatnot, so make sure nothing sits on there and sticks and makes a high part look dark, and uh, give it a 
day or two and it dries and you can even seal over it because it's really thin. As you can see here, well this one's a little bit different. There we go. Really practice those dark eyelids. Like I said, I add tone, not necessarily in a way that would be correct for uh, natural or artificial lighting. I don't imagine that there's a, a light source up here or over here or anything and, and try to do it that way. The, these are done uh, as reference for my carvings. And if you like drawing and sketching, this is a great way, things like this are a great way to get started. You don't need anything fancy, newsprint, and any writing implement, and you go to town, and you just practice. I've been practicing these since well, I started carving full-time in about summer of 2012. So, a lot of practice and they get better every year and as many as I've done I, I just do not get tired of them they are they're always fun I like my little especially when I'm at shows they're they're my friends they hang out I don't uh, being a wood carver I don't get a whole lot of people that actually come in my booth uh, if I'm at a show I'm lucky to get uh, maybe three percent of the actual population of the show to come on in and say hello so if you <clears throat> consider let me see last show i did was hogetown renaissance fair up in gainesville florida it's an amazing show so much fun i was upset when we didn't get to do it this year but safety first i commend hogetown for putting off the show for a year and hopefully we'll return in 2022 and it bigger and better they're supposed to get a new new place to host it's going to be amazing but i think the average weekend or per day on a weekend average saturday was probably 10 to 12,000 people now imagine i only get about 3% of that 10,000 that actually comes in my booth. So uh, I'm assuming a good portion of them actually walk by because it's a pretty simple show to walk. So even if all 10,000 people walk by, I am lucky to have somewhere around 300 people to actually stop in for even just a few minutes, see what's going on. And since I have to man the booth myself because... I'm uh, not exactly a top earning artist, but I love what I do. Uh, because of that, I, uh, <laughs> I'm there for anywhere between 8 to 10 hours in that booth by myself. And there can be a lot of downtime, especially at the start and uh, maybe some lulls through lunch. So while 300 does sound like a lot of people coming in and out, it really isn't. But I do love everybody that comes comes on in and at least says hi for just a minute. And I always appreciate everybody who's just curious. And if you ever want to come by and see me at a show, you can always check my website, tjcleans.com. Right down there. And when I do have some tentative show dates, I will be posting them on my website again. However, there is nothing right now because I will not be in any shows until 2022. But we'll get there. It's going to be fun. 2022 is going to be a really great year. So we're using this time here at the, the studio to... Explore new ideas, get better at what we already do. 
and produce more work so that way when 2022 comes around we've got a lot of great stuff that's going to be in the booth and even if you don't want to buy come on in if i'm in your area and you can afford to come out to the renaissance fair please do so it's a great time all sorts of entertainment a lot of great artisans you'd be surprised what is out there he if you if you want your stereotypical stuff they have it and there's nothing wrong with that if uh people with your very commonplace renaissance fair gear on up to your hardcore stuff where everything is made by hand really great artisans coming out some people make shoes by hand really amazing stuff but uh, come on out most of us like me we're no pressure we just want you to come on in see what's going on in the booth you paid to get in the show come on in check it out and you know what the great thing is if you don't like the person in the booth you can just turn around and walk out nobody's stopping you I always like to greet everybody when they come in but that's about where it ends no pressure or anything I have most people just come in and look and like to see what is what is shaking they'll come in maybe even watch me draw for a little bit and that is part of the reason that I'm there education I want you, the viewer, to know what goes into the making of these pieces. Now, I don't always spend this much time on a, on a piece. Sometimes I do. I'm, I'm trying to render as much as I can with this china marker. It's always a, always a bit of a challenge. See how much you can do with something and not mess it up <laughs> let's see how much shading we can get in there and yeah, we're starting to reach the limit here now things like uh, right here you can actually put a little tone there now it's not something you'd really see in here this would be for larger pieces but sometimes I like to put little layers in their mustaches and beards so this right here would be a similar idea to this where it's pushed back and pushed down but I don't want it to be all the way down it's just a suggestion of and maybe even some of this that's why we're going to put some tone here that some of this would all be blended together in here it's just a nice little roll same thing here Just a little change of levels. And sometimes I put a nice little divot out there. It's always fun to play with shape here. It's a whole lot safer to play with shape here than when you're actually sitting down with a piece. Because if you are trying out shape when you're in the middle of carving and you don't like it you can't put it back you are you are stuck and I like this here this would have maybe some yeah I do that a lot got little pieces coming off and then it's a little difficult to show you I normally have a little shading there and these would actually be raised those are raised areas very similar to something like that it's actually going to be a high point so things here in the brow we don't want too heavy of a brow just a nice soft 
wrinkly shrug of the eyes. Maybe even put a few, if you had the room, a few little wrinkles coming out or something. Something like that. All right, that's starting to get a little busy. So I think we're going to call that guy right there. And I don't always sign my sketches, but uh, we'll do this in case it gets used for anything. Let me, uh, let me write in pen. <laughs> I have too much to write here. Finally, a good stream. Maybe? <laughs> Yes, no. <laughs> All right. All righty. 